Yo, what's all the commotion outside? What's going on? Oh my god. The warden's attacking the village again? Okay. Timothy? Where's my super suit? What? What do you mean you washed it? I just... Whoa, 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 Timothy, what did you do to my super suit? What? How? It's better now? The village is in danger. Ugh. Timothy, how many times have I told you not to mess with... What? Ugh. Okay, fine. But if this thing shrunk even half a size, you realize it's your tail feathers, right? Whoa. Uh... Timothy? Holy... Oh, now we're talking. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today, if you caught that incredible reference from the intro, you'd have guessed that we are talking about armor. More specifically, armor with abilities. You see, recently I put out a video detailing a secret. Mojang is hidden in the newest 1.20 snapshots that may have some fascinating repercussions for armor in the future. If you haven't watched it yet, Go check that video out first, and I won't spoil the secret. If you have seen it, then you know that one of the things I wish armor had in Minecraft were some defining abilities per piece or set of armor. Sure, turtle helms allow you to breathe longer underwater, and netherite provides fire durability, immunity, and knockback resistance, but why are the rest of the armor sets mostly just defense upgrades of one another? Well, not to step on the previous video's script too much, but instead of examining what Minecraft could have, Let's instead make some armor abilities ourselves. This will also fit perfectly into our Making an RPG series, because what RPG doesn't have fun, unique armor you can wear that also reflects death itself? We'll be achieving some custom armor using the new experimental 1.20 feature of armor trims. So, technically, some of these commands are subject to change when the update fully releases, but I doubt Mojang will change them too much at this point. Alright, first things first. What do we mean when we say armor with unique abilities? Well, similar to some recent vanilla functionality, we want armor that provides the player with a specific effect when the armor is worn. Again, like the water breathing effect the turtle helmet gives. How are we going to come up with these effects? Well, if you saw my last video, then you know creativity is really the limit here. Well, that and the hard-coded limitations of Minecraft's command engine. Without using mods or plugins, we are in fact limited to the effects in Minecraft itself, but that doesn't mean we can't think outside the box. For most of the examples today, we will just be making armor that grants existing potion effects when worn. But I'll also show you a few examples of what you can do to make some truly unique gear for your players. So we can start by just testing custom armor with the glowing effect in Minecraft. Let's take a chest plate, for example. We want the chest plate to give the player the glowing effect, only when it is worn. Now, Without armor trims, you'd have to identify the chest plate in question in the command, either with hidden tags, a blatant name, or other parameters you could test for. This is good for a one-off armor set, but it isn't very repeatable. Instead, by using armor trims, we can actually cause all armor of a specific trim or trim material to produce the same effect. Now, either method is fine, but since the armor trims are new, I'll be showing how to achieve that one today. This allows for easier set bonuses later, and requires little loot generation on your part. So, of course, when we're testing for something, the easiest way to do so is simply to test for all parts of the armor being a specific combination, and running our command if that armor is being worn. For this, of course, we want to start with the execute command. Now, our commands today are all going to be pretty similar once we've already built out our first one, so after that it'll just be changing little parts about it. So first up, of course, we will start with our good old execute as, because we want to test a specific part of a player. Player. And because we'll be running this for multiplayer, we will of course do at A, or any player on the server. Now, we've talked a lot about selectors and the execute command before, so I won't spend too much time on this, but today we're going to be testing for NBT data of a player, which can get a little confusing. You see, NBT data are things that act as tags or sort of identifiers on the player. Things like how much health the player has, or what a player has in their inventory. But the thing about NBT data is, because it's so expansive, there's no easy way to just fill out the command by pressing tab a couple of times. We have to know the path that we're looking for. Lucky for us, we've actually done this before in our video about how to make custom trinkets in Minecraft. We actually tested for NBT data to check what a player was holding in their main or offhand and give them effects because of it. 
this is actually going to use a very similar situation. So to test for the path we want here, we want to look for the player's inventory. And of course, we want to look inside of it. And because there can be multiple things, it counts as an array. So we will put a set of square brackets. Next up, we want to check for a specific item. So we'll set a pair of curly brackets up. And now how do we identify if the player is actually wearing this chest plate in their quote unquote inventory? Well, we've talked about this before as well. We're actually going to use the slot identifier. Now, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but Minecraft actually assigns a slot number to every item in the player's inventory, even their hotbar, their armor, their offhand, and even the crafting grid. There's a couple of great pictures circulating around on the internet, but for our chest plate, the slot itself is slot 102, and we'll put a little B after that as well. Okay, now that we know the slot we're looking for, we have to look for the item specifically. Well, in this case, we of course are tagging by ID and we are going to be using an iron chest plate. So I'll set up a set of quotation marks as this is a string and we are looking for Minecraft colon iron underscore chest plate. And this of course is checking, are we wearing an iron chest plate in the chest plate slot? Okay, this we've all seen before, but now in 1.20, there are a couple of new identifiers or parameters you can add onto this. For example, if we go ahead and comma and write tag as we are going to start looking for specific tags, our first new tag we get that we can set up here is actually the trim tag. I'm sure many of you saw this coming, but it's pretty self-explanatory. This allows you to tell what trim is currently on the armor set. And of course, this is how we are going to be creating unique armor with set bonuses is by adding specific armor trims. So for us, we'll put another set of curly brackets here as we keep going deeper and deeper. Let's go ahead and make a trim out of amethyst. So we want to make sure we write our material. And then this is going to be another string. And this is actually simply Minecraft colon amethyst. Now, you can use whatever material you want. Just make sure you adhere to the actual materials in Minecraft. If you're using data packs or mods, this can get a bit more complicated and creative. But just know there are those sort of eight main materials as of recording that you can put on armor trims. Amethyst is one of them. Okay, now that we have the material, let's also set what the pattern is going to be. So once again, if I put a colon, we are looking for another string. And again, these are just items inside of Minecraft. Pattern that we want to use today for testing will be the ward armor trim pattern. Okay. Now it looks like I kind of just pulled all of that out of thin air, but really all this is saying is once we've designed a piece of armor, let's go ahead and check for its parameters. So we are theoretically making an iron chest plate with the ward pattern made of amethyst. That's all this command is saying. It's just checking for that specific armor piece on any player. Okay, that is all of the checking we need to do. So now we need to decide what actually happens if this returns is true. Of course, as we said earlier, we are actually going to run the effect command and we are going to give it to the player that returns it as true or at S. We are just going to do glowing as this is an easy one to test. For now, we'll just set this to be one second and I'll explain this in a minute. We don't need an amplifier for glowing and we don't want to see the particles, so I will go ahead and hide them. And because this is a repeating command block, we do want to check every tick, so we want to make sure we set this to always active. Now, what this should do when I press done is give the glowing effect to any player wearing an iron chest plate with the ward pattern that is made of amethyst. Now, I know this might seem really specific, but bear with me. So if I go ahead and press done and we look in this chest right here, sure enough, I do have an iron chest plate with the ward armor trim made of amethyst. Now, if I go into my inventory and put this on, Sure enough, you can see we have the glowing effect, and we are indeed glowing. If I take it off, you can see the glowing ends, and that's why we set it to be one second. Because otherwise, if we set it to be infinite or anything longer than one second, technically you could slap on a piece of armor like this, quick take it off, and retain the effects. So for something as instant as this, we like to set that to be one second. Already, this is cooler than most of the armor in Minecraft because it actually gives you an effect only when worn. And the bonus here is... This command has now become hard-coded as an armor type in your world. Without you needing to name any specific armor sets or make your boss drop a very specific chest plate, now whenever players gain simply an iron chest plate with an amethyst ward trim, they will also gain glowing. This could mean you have different iron chest plates with different attributes that drop from different enemies, but as long as they have the amethyst ward trim, they'll all be granted the glowing effect. This is huge because now there's a lot less work for you coding this effect into every individual chest plate that drops in your RPG world. But this is still really specific. 
What if, instead, you wanted to give iron armor with any amethyst trim the glowing effect, not just the ward pattern? Well, thanks to Minecraft's parameter omission, you can. You see, even though we've set the trim specifically in our previous command, we filled it out with two identifiers, the material and the pattern. Technically, because this is an execute command, all we need is one of those parameters, and Minecraft won't care if the other one is true or not. So if we actually just go ahead and copy this entire command, and paste it into a new repeating command block, but this time we can go ahead and delete the pattern identifier all the way back to this pair of quotation marks. Now if we press done just by changing that small little omission, this command will now check if any iron chestplate with any pattern made of amethyst is being worn, and then give glowing to the player. Again, make sure we actually set this to always active. And let's go ahead and test this with two chestplates with different trim patterns, but both made out of amethyst. If I grab both of these, we can go ahead and take my old ward one off. All right, effect is ended. So this one actually has the coast armor trim made of amethyst. And we can go ahead and put that on, and sure enough, we gain glowing. And immediately, without changing anything in our command blocks, if we take this one with the sentry armor trim made of amethyst, we also gain glowing. So now in your RPG world, you could say that abilities are tied to the trim material no matter the pattern. This still gives players the ability to customize their look in your world, while still choosing what effect they like the most. Maybe all copper trim patterns grant fire resistance, and all redstone ones grant strength. Now, I know what you're thinking. Can we apply this mentality to any armor instead of specifically an iron chestplate? Well, the short answer is unfortunately no. You can indeed check for if the player is wearing simply anything in their armor slot without any more parameters if I deleted everything after slot 102b, but Minecraft needs to know specifically what piece of armor to check for trim patterns on. So if I got rid of everything after this, this would simply check if I'm wearing anything in here without a way for me to determine what material or pattern that trim is made of. So if you do want amethyst to be a global material for glowing, no matter the tier of armor, gold, diamond, iron, whatever, you'll have to make a command block for each armor piece in the game that checks for an amethyst trim material. It's timely work, but still worth it, and we will get into that a little bit later. Now, for testing purposes, I am going to make sure I turn these off, just so we don't have any overlapping commands from here on out. And next up, if we can check just the material, surely we can check just the trim pattern instead. And of course, that's exactly right. If we paste the exact same command as the original command block, this time we can go ahead and just delete the trim material. All the way back to that curly bracket. Now we can assign the trim patterns to be the things tied to special effects. If I go ahead and press done, Let's go and see, we have a couple of different materials here, but they're both using the ward armor trim. Now before we put these on, make sure we set this to always active. And then if we go ahead and put on our first emerald chest plate, you see we automatically get glowing. It's no longer amethyst, but it is ward. If I take this off, we'll lose glowing, and then put this copper one on, and just like before, we also gain glowing, simply because the pattern is ward. Now you can make any pattern itself give a special effect, regardless of the material associated with it. This is functionally similar to the previous check, but perhaps you'd rather have the players choose their trim color rather than pattern to accessorize. Either way works, it's just up to you. Okay, so far we've learned how to give cool effects to a specific piece of armor, a trim material on a specific piece of armor, and a pattern on a specific piece of armor. While this all works, it's a bit powerful for a single item. In theory, your players could gain four different pieces of armor that each give them a different effect, making them very powerful indeed. If you want to avoid this, then I suggest buying into the tried and true RPG mechanic of set bonuses. And what's a set bonus, I hear you ask? Well, it's an effect that applies to a player while wearing specific armor, but only while wearing a complete set of armor. If we think back to our Terraria comparison in our last video, the meteorite armor only gives you infinite mana with the space gun once you're wearing the full set. Wearing two out of three pieces still gives you bonuses, but won't get the cool ability until you don that last piece. Now, in Minecraft, we can replicate this, of course, by checking for more parameters in our execute command. Let's continue testing with our glowing effect for now, but only apply it when a player is wearing a full set of iron armor with the ward trim made of amethyst. Now, this is a much longer command, 
but it follows the exact same pattern as before. If we go ahead and paste in that original command we made for our very first check, you can see that we are indeed just checking in slot 102 if we are wearing an iron chest plate with an amethyst trim with the ward pattern. But now, after that first item, we can add another in the correct armor slot, checking for the next correct piece of armor. So, in slot 103B, we can instead check for an iron helmet. And then, of course, we need to do the same thing as before, as checking for its specific trim tags. Amazing. So now, in theory, if I were to set this to be always active and press done, it's actually going to check to see if we have an iron helmet and an iron chest plate, both with the ward pattern made of amethyst, on our body before applying any effects. But before testing this, I'm just going to go ahead and add all four pieces of armor, because this is the idea of a set bonus. So now that we've gone up to the helmet, let's go ahead and go back down for the leggings, which is slot 101B. And then finally, once more, slot 100B for iron boots. Okay, that was a long one, as you can see. We had to add every piece of armor from the iron set into here with the same parameters of checking for a ward pattern made of amethyst, but now we can finally input our final effect here, which is going to be the same as before, just giving the glowing effect to the player. Now, we'll set this to be always active, and we'll press done. Now, because the rest of these command blocks are inactive right now, they all need redstone, we shouldn't see any difference if we put any of these on. You see we have no glowing, no glowing, no glowing, nothing like that. In theory, what should happen here is only when we wear a full set of iron armor with this exact trim and material will we gain the glowing effect. So let's try it out. Chest plate, nothing. Leggings, nothing. Boots. And finally, if I add the helmet, glowing has been achieved. And all of a sudden, you've made your very first set bonus in Minecraft. And just to show you that it wasn't just the helmet, if I go ahead and take off the pants, we lose glowing. Put the pants back on. Our set bonus is back. This is probably one of the biggest RPG accomplishments you can perform in Minecraft. Actually making sets of armor give you unique bonuses, and it's not that hard to do. A long command, sure, which will be available for copy and paste down in the description below, but still, no scoreboards or anything like that, just a single command block set to repeating, and all of a sudden, your creativity is your only bounds. You could have sets of armor that make the player jump higher, run faster, punch harder, and they can all be tied to different trims in sets. For example, I could make another set of iron armor also with the ward pattern, but this time in emerald, and that specific armor set does give you speed. The combinations are nearly limitless. You could also make it so only netherite armor in your world, once it has any trim or any pattern on it, gives you set bonuses. Maybe it's something for the players to achieve. I don't know, it's totally up to you. We're not quite done though, because there are two more things we can do here. The first, as we talked about a little earlier, is actually giving yourself a set bonus of any class. Now, this isn't actually much of a difference. You see, all we need to do here is take the command we have from our set bonus, copy it, and if we go into here and paste it, now instead, you can actually just go ahead and change the material of the armor itself to give yourself a set bonus in different sets of armor. The only downside here is you'll have to do this for every armor tier. Leather, chain, iron, and so on. Again, it's the same command, you're just actually going back and changing the set of armor. So this time it's leather boots, this time if we take a look, it's chainmail boots so on and so forth. And sure enough, if I go ahead and take off all this iron armor, make sure these are both set to always active, just so we can test these two. We'll go ahead and grab our leather set and our chain set. And this is the exact same command. They have the same pattern, the same materials. I get no effects. And then as soon as I pop them all on, 
we have glowing just like before I can do the same here so I know I mentioned it would be a little tricky to do earlier and it is you need a lot of repeating command blocks and to change a lot of tedious parameters inside them but it is possible now you could actually tie the glowing or any effect to that specific combination of pattern and material basically saying if you put the amethyst ward on any set of armor you'll always gain the glowing effect this is actually a cool way to tell players that there are specific upgrade trees they could do no matter the set of armor they have. And finally, one of the most interesting and self-explanatory ones is adding multiple effects per set or per piece. Now, what do I mean by multiple effects? Well, when we saw our little intro sequence, when I put on my mighty kip suit that I have over there, I gained not one, but several effects. This is as easy, though, as just adding another command block and duplicating what we already had. Just like before, we go ahead and copy our set bonus for iron. We go ahead and paste it in here, and you don't actually change anything for this one. This is just saying as long as we're wearing the iron armor with the correct pattern, we will gain glowing. But now we copy this, put it in another repeating command block, and also say if we have our full set of iron armor with the ward pattern and amethyst material will also give the player speed okay now both of these are set to active now if i go ahead and put on our iron armor from before we get speed and glowing it's as easy as that just add a couple more command blocks and go ahead and add more effects attached to them all right so now that i've demonstrated all of the different methods of using armor trims to create unique armor bonuses I'm going to show off a few examples that I've made using this system. Right now, I'm just going to showcase the effects because making some of these are actually quite complex and I don't want this video to be immeasurably long. If you are interested in the specifics of these armor sets, I'll be releasing a data pack with all of these custom armor sets, as well as a few more in proper loot fashion that you can use yourself or give out to your players in your server. The data pack will be available to all level 4 kips on my Patreon as a thank you for supporting me. Just know that now you have the basics. You just need to change what effects are actually applied to the player, and don't be afraid to think outside the box. I used all of the exact same commands in these command blocks. The only thing I changed were the after effects that are given with the full set. So let's move on to the sets. So the first and most basic set we have here is the Armor of Regen. I kind of wanted to increase the complexity as the tier of armor went up, so this one is pretty simple and self-explanatory. When you wear this specific set, it will give you an effect just like our glowing effect. If we go ahead and take a look at this, sure enough, I have regeneration. This is actually really nice. If we go ahead and turn over to survival mode here, and we just go ahead and run up against this cactus. Where is it? There it is take damage and we have regen it's just like drinking a regen potion now in leather form wow moving right along to something that gets a little fancier we have the armor of arrow blocking if i go ahead and wear this set we're actually going to see a very interesting thing occur so i'm going to put on all but one piece here and i'm going to go ahead and shoot this bow for usual especially because i'm in creative mode i can shoot as many arrows i want in any direction However, if I were to put on this last set, these pair of boots, and, oh, I don't know, we were to be near any projectiles either in the air or on the ground, the suit prevents them from hitting you, aka deleting the projectiles. What this looks like, in fact, is something like this. If we go ahead and shoot this into the air and wear it, you will never be touched by a fired arrow again. It does, of course, mean you can no longer shoot a bow because it deletes even your arrows, but that doesn't matter. How cool is this? To help demonstrate this, we have a friendly skeleton here that no matter how many times they'll try, the arrow just gets deleted. An incredible piece of equipment. Next on our list, we have the Armor of Cleansing. Now, what this particular gold armor does with our Spire Emerald Trim is clear a whole multitude of negative effects whenever you are applied them. So if we go ahead and wear this set of armor, see how fancy and regal we look like this. Now, if we drink a potion of, well, icky stuff, you can see that we'll get slowness to poison and wither. If I go ahead and take off the boots and give us a little drink. Yeah, sure enough, poison, wither, and slowness too. Not great. But the second I put on those boots, 
the effects are completely cleared. And if I try and drink it, you can see the effects pop up for a second because I have the armor of cleansing. No more will negative effects afflict my game. All right, now we start getting into more complicated territory. With the armor of sacred flames, ever wanted to burn undead with holy light? Well, now you are able to. For if we wear this set of armor and we'll wear the full set, You'll immediately notice that we get fire resistance as an innate effect, and we have a burning, bubbling, fiery ground wherever we walk around us. Which, in and of itself, is already a cool cosmetic effect. But, if any zombies come within this holy flame, you can see they immediately take damage. Actually, whether they're on fire or not, let's go ahead and put one under a tree here. You can see that even though they're not actually burning, they are taking damage from our holy flame. Fear the holy light zombies fear it. All right, now we really start to bridge on Terraria level armor with our armor of Ice Wall. If we go ahead and put this on, we start adding active abilities to our armor. You see, first things first, if I go ahead and slap all the armor on, you notice I don't actually get any effects. If we take a look at myself, nothing seems different other than this snazzy getup we now have going on. Well, what if we're in the middle of, I don't know, combat somewhere, and we quickly need a place to hide? But there's no cover anywhere around. If I go ahead and press shift, we can create our own cover. Sure enough, if I hold down shift and move around, we can make a big ice wall a la May from Overwatch. And then after about, oh, I don't know, 20 seconds of the ice wall being there, it slowly decays and dissipates over time. This is only possible while wearing the armor of the ice wall. If you want to see that like this, we can go ahead and shift, we can look around, and we can entirely encase ourselves in ice. But don't worry, this doesn't destroy any of the blocks around you. No, it only looks to replace air and then delete the ice around you after it is done. Finally, one of the most complicated ones I can think of is the Armor of Eldritch Knowledge. This, actually being netherite and trimmed with diamond, has a couple of legendary effects. The first being, when I wear this armor and go to enchant an item, because this is enriched with Eldritch Knowledge, if I go ahead and enchant, oh, I don't know, just this sword with sharpness, you can see that we also get an Ender Pearl in our inventory. For being infused with Eldritch Knowledge, every time you enchant while wearing this armor, you will be gifted one Ender Pearl. Of course, this doesn't get rid of the Lapis or Experience requirements, just a nice way in the end game to actually give yourself Ender Pearls back before doing some arcane enchanting. But it doesn't stop there. You see, with some clever handiwork, and we can go over to this bed, let's just go ahead and set the time to night, I'll just very quickly sleep in the bed. You'll notice nothing immediately changes around me. Sure enough, it doesn't look like anything changed at all. We'll go ahead and set the time back to noon over here, come over by Timothy, and just run ourselves into some lovely cacti. Now, why am I doing this, you may ask? Well, the armor of Eldritch Knowledge has a very interesting secondary effect. You see, being made of netherite and all-powerful as it is at the end of your game, it has the ability to save the user from certain death. Uh, this is gonna take a while to get close to certain death, so bear with me a minute. Alright, there. As we say, as we get close to certain death, you'll notice, when all is lost, we will simply teleport to our most recent slept location and regain a small portion of our health so as to not immediately die. This is a very cool endgame ability to allow players the chance to cheat death as long as they are in the same dimension as their bed and not lose their incredibly powerful set of armor. Editor Kip here. I know that I already mentioned earlier, if you wanted to see these armors in particular, I will be releasing a data pack on Patreon, but I realized some of the methods to create these were actually kind of interesting, albeit very complex, so if you do want to see a little bit more, I will also have a behind-the-scenes video coming out on Patreon as well, for my level 2 Kips and above. So if you're really interested in how I made some of these complex armor sets, you can check it out there. And there you have it. Some pretty straightforward ways to give your armor with trim some flair in Minecraft, some unique abilities, and of course set bonuses, and some examples of the things you can achieve when you go beyond just Minecraft's standard effects, and actually add some scoreboards and other entity-related tracking into the mix. Like I said, your creativity really is your only limit here, as go ahead and experiment with any of the commands in Minecraft and you might come up with some really interesting effects. Speaking of which, I'm really interested to know what you guys want to use this system for. You want to make sets of armor that allow you to swim through lava with ease, or maybe empower you only in thunderstorms, or, like in a previous video, put cake on the floor wherever you walk around. Please let me know what you guys want to do down in the comments below. 
Like I said earlier, I will also have a data pack be coming out on my Patreon for level 4 kips that gives all six of these sets of armor as well as two more unique ones that haven't been showcased here as a way to say thank you. Speaking of Patreon, there's a new behind the scenes video coming to Patreon where we actually took a look at the Minecraft rejected feedback website that we saw in a previous video and talked about some of the implications as well as why those ideas won't be coming to Minecraft. It was a pretty cool behind the scenes video with some pretty based opinions. Finally, if you enjoyed this video in any way, remember to leave a like and stay subscribed for more Minecraft command related content. Let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see in the future. And of course, until next time from Timothy and myself, see ya.